Hello and welcome back to part three of this bush program. So we're making this bush program on a CNC lathe and we're now on the center drill parts. So we're going to start working on this bore. So my name is Mark and I am G-Code Tutor. Okay, so we're going to start off by writing this very simple program for this part three of the bush. Now before we have done the roughing cycle on part one and roughed out the profile using a sub routine. And then on the second part of this bush program, we done a finishing pass across our profile and we reused that sub program. So to look at those two lessons, head back to part one and part two in this series. So as I said, this lesson is more basic than the previous two. We're not using any cycles at all. We're just going to do point to point programming with our center drill. So we're gonna start off by using an N number. So we're using N3 and this is our search function. So we can easily search to this section of the program. And in brackets are operators note, and I've just called this C drill, so we know we're working with a center drill on this section. Next up, we have our safety line. Now I've gone into more detail on our safety line on the previous lesson, so I'm not going to go into much detail here. I'm just gonna list what these G codes are. So G54 is our working datum, and we set this at the front of our part. So all dimensions in Z will be minus as we cut material and plus if we are away from the front of our part in Z. G21 sets our machine to the metric measuring system. G80 cancels our active cycles. So if we have any drill cycles or whatever that's active in the machine, this cancels our machine and puts it back into a normal state. G40 cancels any cutter compensation that may be active and G97 is sets our spindle speed to revs per minute. Now most lathes use tool calls in this fashion. So T03 calls up tool three, our tool that's in position three of our turret. And the second O3 there calls upon our offsets. So any offsets we add to this tool, it will add them to our tool geometry that we've just called up. And MO6 does our tool change and that will rotate the turret to bring our center drill on the center line of the machine when we move our tool position to x 0.0. Now in the previous two lessons, we used constant surface cutting speed. That's not needed when we are drilling. So as our machine is already in G97 mode, our revs per minute, we just need to set those revs. So MO3 turns our spindle on in a clockwise direction and S1000 sets the RPM of our spindle to a thousand revolutions per minute. So with the correct tool in position and the spindle rotating, we can now start moving our axes around to get everything into place. So I'm using G00, our rapid travel command, and we're bringing down that center drill to the center line of our machine with X 0.0. Now I like to leave plenty of clearance away from the parts when we're rapid in our tool around inside our 3D environment. So I'm coming down to five millimeters away from the front face of our part with Z 5.0. So this gives us plenty of clearance. Now at this point, I'm gonna turn on the coolant with MO8. Now you can turn on the coolant wherever you like, but I like to turn on the coolant just before we start removing material. This way, I got plenty of visibility inside the machine without that coolant splashing up on the screen to see what's going on. So this next move might be a little controversial. Some of you might be used to seeing your tool rapid straight into position. But I like to wrap it in with a bit of a Z clearance first, and then on a second line, wrap it in closer to the part with Z 1.0. When we hit cycle start in single block, we have that rapid move in two separate lines. So we can make sure that it's going to be a safe rapid move. So we can eyeball and make sure that the tool is five millimeters away from the part before the second rapid move there just to make sure we've set our tool correct and we don't plow into the part. So now we're ready to start removing material. So I'm switching over to G01, our feed rate command movement, and I'm coming into Z minus 3.5 millimeters. So that's a 3.5 millimeter cut that the drill is going to enter the material. And because we have G01 and it's the first time we've used G01 in this sequence, we have to issue a feed rate. So I'm issuing a feed rate of F 0.08. With our center hole drilled now, we can now wrap it, our tool back out of the component. So switching back over to G00, Z5, 
We're now pulling our tool back to five millimeters away from that front face of our part where we set our datum. So now I wish to take our tool back to its tool change position. So I'm switching over to the machine datum with G53. So now all our datum positions come from the machine zero position and not the zero position that we set on our component. So X zero, Z minus 210. Now, why Z 210? Well, this is because X zero, Z zero will take our tool back to its machine zero position, which is often the tool change position also. But by adding a distance to the Z, I'm not putting my tool turret over the top of the sub spindle. So if we have any long tools and do a tool change, we have no risk of collision. So by doing this, my tool turret is in between the spindle and the sub spindle. So there's plenty of clearance to do tool changes. Now this is often not needed. Most people do tend to do tool changes over the sub spindle. I like to do tool changes away from that sub spindle just in case I have any long tools in there that may collide. So with our tool safely back in its home position, we can now shut down the rest of this sequence. So MO9 turns off our coolant, and we could have added this to either of the two lines above if we wish. MO5 stops our spindle from rotating, and then finally MO1 is our optional stop. So we can stop the machine here and check to make sure the center drill drilled correctly. Now this is optional stop of course, if we're not pushing our optional stop button, the machine won't stop here. It will carry on to run the next sequence. So that's an example on how we may approach the problem of doing point to point drilling without using any cycles, we're just using G01 to get the depth of our bore. Now like all G-code programs, you shouldn't punch this straight in your machine and expect it to run. There's many variations of G-code and each machine is slightly different depending how the parameters are set up and which control systems you're using. So I teach a generic version of G-code that can be adapted to program your exact machine. And if you want to know more about G-code programming, head over to my website where I have loads of free articles and videos and advice, and also some paid courses to give you full training in programming G-code, CAD CAM, and machine shop maths.